everyone, welcome to our video showing the uh, Freeway SA160C for Compact Mini Stand Aid. So it's the latest iteration of our Compact Stand Aid. It's one of the smallest on the market. We've added some extra features recently, so I thought I'd run through those with you first, and then we'll have a look at actually fitting the slings using it. I'll do that with myself first of all, and then I've got a colleague standing by uh, to be my client patient service user. Uh, so we can go through how I would fit the slings around them and then stand them up. So we'll be using a standing sling for full support standing and then we'll be using a transport sling or a dual access toileting tire style sling to do the transport option if you're going to move a bit further on the unit. So if we go down to the unit to start with, we'll have a look at the functions and the features. First of all obviously we've got the handset. The handset is a four button handset up and down obviously will stand and sit somebody, it operates the boom at the top there, up is up, down is down, and then there are two buttons on the left and the right for open and close of the base unit. So if we press to open, the legs will get wider, and if we press close, they will close again. The benefit of having electric legs on a unit like this, when you're dealing with furniture, if, if it's in a bit of a room that's a bit congested with furniture and books and bookshelves and sideboards, all the different equipment that you're going to come across, you can open the legs to a set position. So it can be wide enough to go around a chair, but not too wide that it interferes and hits the chair next to it. Certainly if it's in a care home and you've got chairs next to each other in a day room, for example. So the fact that you can open it as wide as you need without going too far, or you can just keep your finger on the button and it will open full width to go around quite a wide rise and recliner style armchair. So I'm going to go down to the base to show you what's happening down there. We have a, a new style of foot plate. It's fixed on at the moment and it's actually screwed in. There's two screws which can be taken off. So if I undo, I'm not going to take it off on this occasion, but however, if I show you, if I remove the screw on this side and the other side, the, knee, the foot plate just lifts off. That means you can use the unit for standing people to the floor. So if somebody's struggling to get from a low chair or a low toilet, once they're up they can walk potentially, maybe with a frame, but it's just actually getting their bottom off a low piece of equipment. We could stand them to the floor, we remove the foot plate, stand them to the floor, I'll show you that again later when, when we've got the slings. Once they're on the floor and steady on their feet, we can remove the unit out of the way, give them their frame and they can walk off. For most people, however, it would be used with the foot plate in place. What we've also added on the foot plate at the front here is a soft pad. We had quite a few issues with all the stand aids we've ever had in the past, going back years and years, uh, barefoot transfers, people wearing socks and kicking the front of the unit, which is a hard metal plate on any stand aid. So we've put a nice soft pad on there. This just Velcros on, so it's removable. And if you need to take it off, if you spill anything down there, you can take it off and wash it, put it back on again. Most people would leave that on permanently because it does protect the toes, um, especially if carers bring the, the hoist in a bit too quickly and it bangs in onto the front of somebody's foot. If we move up slightly, we have the knee pad and it comes with an optional calf support. In my opinion, the calf support is very rarely necessary. If somebody's able to stand, they shouldn't need their legs strapping onto the unit. However, if somebody does have occasional involuntary movements, if one leg is a bit weaker than the other, maybe it slips to the side, we can use the strap. It attaches on the side of the unit here and here. It's in two pieces. We fasten together around the back of the calf once somebody's in position before we stand them and then you have the adjustment of the strap on this side which can be pulled tighter or we can use it on the sides there and adjust how tight it is. So I'm going to drop that down out of the way for a second. Now it's going to be difficult to see on the camera here but behind the foot plate which is a nice soft pad we have two thumb wheels, one on either side, two screws. If I undo them and loosen them off slightly, both together, we then have full adjustment of the knee pad. It will go up and down, in and out, and it adjusts for angle as well. So this was, if I'm gonna guess where it's gonna be set up for me to use, I'm gonna guess about there for now, and we can adjust it when I actually stand myself. 
tighten them off again and that will stay in there. One thing that doesn't tighten and stays slightly loose, so now it won't go up and down and it won't go in and out because I've tightened it off, but it will still angle itself. That means that if I'm stood at a funny angle, if it's not positioned in the correct position for me, when my leg comes into contact, it will adjust itself to the position of my leg when I stand against it. Makes it much more comfortable and less likely that somebody's gonna put pressure on the top or the bottom of the pad where you've got a hard, solid base behind it. So we'll have a play with that when I actually stand myself. Just turning this round again, coming to the back of the unit. We have the brakes on the casters at the back. So the brakes are operated generally with the foot. You can use your hands, it's really easy to do. You can do them with your fingers. Most people would actually use a foot to operate the brake and then flick it up to take the brakes off. So both brakes are on the rear casters, not the front casters. And then we have, again, the controllers here. I'm just gonna raise this up a little bit to show you this bar here. We have adjustment on the top bar and then the control box and battery has all been hidden away inside the unit. If I turn it around again, you'll see, historically, the control box and the battery is positioned on the back of all units. It's on the back of a hoist generally, or it's on the back of a stand aid. Sometimes the issue with that is, people kick and knock it, the battery falls off, or they accidentally knock the emergency stop button and switch the hoist off and don't understand why it's just stopped working. So the fact that we've put that inside the unit is protected as well. If you run into a wall or a door frame, you're not going to damage the most expensive part of the unit, which is the thing that controls all the functions. And you can see it's also angled, so care staff can read the display that's at the bottom. So if I start at the top and work my way down, there is an adjustment on here. So when somebody is ready to be stood, we'll do this properly when I'm in the sling again, if you undo these, just loosen them slightly, this top bar here, where the sling attaches, is adjustable. You can make it longer or shorter. The benefit of that, if you have somebody sat in the chair and they're maybe sat quite back or they're slumped slightly, they're a bit further away from the unit, you can't get the, the unit closer to them, it can be a struggle for the sling to reach the hooks and carers sometimes end up trying to pull somebody's weight forward to attach them on there. With this one, we just extend the bar to the person, attach the sling really easily, and then pull the bar back as far as we can, and then lock it off into position again. The other benefit of this, if you have somebody that's very, very tall, considering this is one of the smallest units out there, you can actually extend it out and leave it extended. So that means when the unit then does a full stand, the hooks attached to the hoist and the sling are actually in a higher position for a much taller person. So the smallest unit is suitable for the tallest of people. Just lower that back down out of the way again. And I'll just reposition that. So the other thing we've got on the back here, so if I just run through the function and features of here, the battery is removable. There's a little clip on the back, I can take that off there if I want to but generally the unit is charged directly by plugging it in. So all we would do is plug the unit in to a standard socket and the hoist will begin to charge. There is a separate cable attached to the hoist unit itself from the power cable. The idea of this is if you plug that into the wall and a carer forgets or a family member forgets that it's plugged in, if they walk off down the corridor with the hoist when this is still plugged in, it will disconnect the power cable. It won't damage the socket, it won't tear the cable, potentially leaving live wires dangling on the floor, and most importantly, from a cost point of view, it won't damage the hoist unit itself. Again, the expensive control box that controls everything. So that comes as standard, and it just plugs into there and straight into the socket. There is a little clip at the side, so you can clip the socket on, Clip the plug on there, it keeps it out of the way, stops it dangling on the floor and interfering with anything. If I operate the hoist in any direction, the hoist tells me it's going up and the hoist also tells me it's going down. If I press up for a split second and let go, it displays a screen on there which tells me how many lifts the hoist has done, 
they are full cycles. So each time I press up, it doesn't count one, two, three, four, five. It's a full cycle from the lowest point to the highest point and back down again. So it's one full cycle that, that it's counting. Below there is the actuations in seconds. So that counts how many seconds we press up or down for. That tells me how long the motor's been actually physically running. The benefit of that is for, not for you guys that are using it, but certainly from an engineering point of view, for service and repair, we can tell how long the, the, the motors have been used for, how long they've been running for, how old the unit is, and whether we might be, need to be changing parts on this hoist due to extended use. Below there we have a, a weight symbol, this one says zero, that will tell me if you've overloaded the hoist. The hoist itself has a 160 kilo weight limit, if you try and exceed that and stand somebody that weighs, let's call it 200 kilos at 30 stone, the hoist will know you've done it and it will register on here. It might also register if you've tried to stand somebody up and you've attached a sling somehow to their rise and recliner chair, it's got caught on there or it's on a, a wheelchair, so you try to stand the person along with the chair because it's being lifted. So basically what it's telling me is that at some point you've overloaded this unit if that number is significant, that tells me you've been standing somebody up on a regular basis who is too heavy for the unit. Um, so senior staff, ward managers in hospitals, care home, they can actually keep a check on that and make sure that it's not being used for the wrong type of residents and clients. And finally at the bottom is your service date. So it tells me when it's due for its annual service, not the lower six monthly check, this is the full annual service and it tells me how many days I've got left until the full service is due. Again, it's more of a benefit for the engineers on the loader checking, uh, but if you're not sure when your hoist is due a service, press up, let go, and you can have a look on there how many days you've got left. If you press down very quickly and let go, it tells you the battery power. So as you'll see from this one, we've got full charge in the battery. The battery will slowly deplete as the power is used, at some point then, it will start to flash and we'll get an audible alarm. So the hoist will beep when you get a low battery. Don't panic, generally you will have about five transfers left. And what will happen, when I press up and try and stand somebody and the hoist is under load, it will beep. When I let go, it stops. When I press up again, it will start to beep as a low battery warning. If, however, I press up and it starts to beep and I let go and it doesn't stop beeping, it continues to beep continuously in, in order to annoy you to the point where it's now saying, I'm not going to stop beeping, I'm very low, I'm about to shut off, please put me on charge straight away. So there's kind of a two-tier two warning system for the battery. Beeping when you press up is a low battery warning, you'll have four or five transfers left. Beeping when you're not pressing anything tells me that the battery is almost about to die completely and you must put it on charge as soon as possible. We also have the emergency stop, so between the, uh, above the display here, we have the emergency stop. If I'm operating the hoist in any direction, press the button, it stops the hoist, it stops all functions working. To reset, it's as simple as twisting the, the button there. So again, press the button to activate, twist to release, and the hoist will start to work. If, for some reason, the handset was to break, you run over it, you're in a client's house and their dog chews the handset, whatever happens, if that, for some reason, doesn't work and you want to use the equipment, or you've got somebody already in there, you can use a pen. So just below the emergency stop, we have an up and a down arrow and a little picture of a hoist unit. There is a little hole next to the up and down arrow, so if I put my pen inside the up arrow, the hoist will operate up. Just a regular ballpoint pen, press inside the down arrow and the hoist will come down. Obviously if there's any problems, contact whoever's going to service and maintain your equipment for you, they will come out and repair, replace the handset. But at least in the meantime, you're not left without the unit. Pop a pen into either of those two holes and you can continue to go up and down. The last thing on here, we have an on and a charge light. I won't show it now because I've got no plug socket next to me. However, if I plug the unit in, I will get a light to tell me that there's power on. That means that the hoist is receiving power. 
If I get also an on and a charge light, that tells me that the hoist is receiving power and it's charging the batteries. The hoist needs to be switched on when it's plugged into charge. If I switch the hoist off with the emergency stop, the hoist presumes there's a problem. There's an emergency and you've hit the emergency button. What you will then find, if you plug the hoist in, you may just get an on light, but you won't get a charge light. That tells me there's power going to the hoist, but the hoist unit, the control box, thinks there's an emergency and it won't allow the power to go through to the batteries in case it does more damage than it presumes has already been caused. So you must always make sure that the hoist is switched on at all times, especially when it's being charged. Apart from that, they're the features and functions, up, down, open and close for the legs, all of your main features and functions are on the back here, and as I say, plug it in to charge it. One last thing to mention, if I just turn the hoist around slightly to the side, you'll be able to see this red collar on the actuator. If, for any reason, the hoist runs out of power completely, the handset doesn't work, the control box doesn't work, and you have somebody up in the hoist, we can twist this collar, just turn it round, and you'll very, very slowly see I'm actually winding the hoist down manually. So regardless, if I take the battery off, the functions don't work, but I can still get somebody down even when there's no power on the unit at all. So it's a bit slow process, but it's just there as a last resort for emergencies. Generally, it's the handset. If the handset doesn't work, you have your emergency buttons on the back here. If they don't work also, then you've got your emergency lower, your override to get somebody down. So we'll now go around and have a look and we'll use some slings and show you how to sit and stand somebody.